Greetings from uh, School of Health Sciences, Nian Polytechnic, Singapore, and a very good afternoon to you all. And so today's topic is student-centered learning experiences using an augmented reality-based digital application. And so this is the overview and the graphic that you see is from the application itself. And so uh, what was our rationale for developing this application? At Nian Polytechnic, we want our students to learn beyond the classroom. And so in order to do that, we need to have a future ready campus for them. And this was our intention when we developed this application, we started doing that in 2017. And in 2020, when the COVID restrictions are there, this application has proved so very handy because our students could not go to the laboratory and could not check the models. But because of this application, their remote learning or their home-based learning continued without any interruption. So let me show you a little bit, few clips from the application so that you understand what you're looking at. So this is the trigger for the augmented reality. And this is the human heart, the way it is in our body. And when the students scan the trigger, this human figure pops out and you can zoom in on the heart. And then you can see this human figure popping out. And when you move the trigger, the app moves with you. So that serves uh, to uh, keep the students curious and engaged. I can follow with a very small uh, video. Just uh, the limitation of time. Hello students, so after helping. downloading the AR Heart app yeah. from the Google Store. So, Hello students, so after. I will not uh, play the video because that is my voice over there. So this is the uh, limited to the students of Nian Poly. The students log in with their student ID and password. And the app has three modules. We have three modules on coronary circulation and three module, modules on electrocardiogram. And there are enough instructions on the screen to show for the students to explore user can explore various buttons and the self directedly the user can uh, go on with the app before the new game starts. So it is in a gameplay mode. So this is a student who is scanning the application using his mobile phone. You can see the shadow. I'm not running the video because the voice is uh, interrupting. So when the student scans this image, now the image is given to the student in their module book. So when they are learning, when they see this image in the module book, all they do is take out their phone, they scan the image and the application starts. So when this application starts, you see here, they can rotate this 3D model of the heart any which way, and then the labels pop up. And then as they click the label, the description of the label comes, so this is the very, very basic uh, level one, which our year one students do. And as they go along, they have more and more uh, labels, more and more levels of uh, complication. Basically. So hello so student. In this one. So hello student. Hold on. Huh? I'm trying to just get this. Yeah. So this is also showing that there are different assessments in this application and they are in the order of complication of Bloom's taxonomy. We have basic assessments, we have higher level assessments, we have some kind of experiential learning going on there. You can see the word block the artery. So the student actually blocks the artery and he sees the effect of this on the heart. So this is the student doing the assessment, just some video that I had captured and you can see that there are multiple choice questions and feedback is given to the student for every right and wrong answer. And then you see this is an ECG, which is the module two. And after explaining the basic or normal to the student, we actually have an assessment where the student constructs a normal ECG. So this is also a higher level of learning. So the student can construct the higher level of learning using something called as the tap tap game. So we worked on this tap tap game and the student can tap these two points and construct the ECG. So in, uh, I, I'm sorry because I can't show the whole video, but if you all are interested, uh, uh, you can contact me by email and I would share the videos with you. 
so this was the what was the relevance to nursing as explained earlier we have students who do not have any biology background and the 2d models also they cannot access we have a very very big cohort of 650 students every year and so they have limited time of two hours per week with the model and so many topics and then YouTube videos are always limited. They are not pitched at the nursing students. They are usually for medical students. And so uh, on the whole, there is no free subscription. If you have free subscription, then there is no access to assessments. And this is further complicated by the different learning styles of a student. So we had a lot of problem where failure date was concerned and sometimes students would feel this nursing course is very difficult and some of them would uh, apply for withdrawal. So we thought that by making this app and increasing the student learning, we can uh, improve on all these issues of hours. And so when we checked the App Store and the Google Play Store, we found that mobile education was very much uh, the uh, flavor of that year. This was 2017. And so we launched on this, uh, making this application. And uh, more importantly for this application, our student can also visualize the processes as they happen dynamically in the body. And they don't really have to dream of anything or imagine anything. They can actually see it happening because of augmented reality when real and virtual objects can interact with each other. So this picture here, the small heart that you see here is the way our application is available on the Google Store and App Store. And so we rolled out in 2019. Uh, so this is what I was actually talking about, that it is a very realistic simulation and has been shown in literature review that it helps in student learning. So we rolled it out in April 2019 and we rolled it out to all three years of nursing students. And those are some pictures of our students actually uh, doing the app. So these are our students in our laboratory. Now, so whenever we do an app, we want to see that the money spent is useful or not. So we have to launch a research project. So we want to launch this research project, which incidentally is done by our year three students. And so we wanted to see whether we wanted to compare self-directed learning and facilitated learning. And we wanted to see which one is giving a more positive experience for our student so that we could lay the way for further courseware design. And uh, so the, up till now in literature, though mobile devices have been shown to enhance learning, there are very few comparisons between uh, various platforms across various platforms and how are these issues of motivation and engagement and test performance of students, like students need to be motivated to learn. They need to believe that they can learn and they can do well in the test. And when the test correlates with their beliefs, that is the boost that they get to learning. They, they need to believe that this is a useful task. This is an interesting task. Only then they will be engaged. So we wanted to check all these student experiences. So we had a protocol and it had to be approved by our institutional review board. And we had this quasi-experimental design, and we used two research instruments, 15 MCQ test and a MSLQ, and also an agentic engagement scale. I'll come to it soon. Uh, of course, there were inclusion and exclusion criteria. We had consent forms and all that protocol was followed. Now, to, uh, this is the one that I will explain a little bit in detail. So our experimental group was uh, the one that was using the AR Heart application and control group was using the traditional method like PowerPoint slides. And so we gave these apps to these two groups. We randomly divided our uh, 650 cohort, which was 32 practical groups and half of them were assigned to the application and half of them were assigned to the traditional PowerPoint. We gave them one week or to play with these things. We did not teach this uh, top 
in class at all, and we made them learn on their own. This was followed by data collection and data collection. We gave the 15 MCQ test and we also gave the motivated learning questionnaire, which I will come to very soon. And after this part one of the project was over, then there was a slight break. They went for their vacation. When they came back after two weeks of vacation, we taught this app, we directed this in our classroom app were directed in the practical activity in the classroom and PowerPoint as well to those groups. And then we again followed with data collection, the 15 MCQ test and the motivation questionnaire. So this is the first part when we did the, so we were comparing the self-directed learning between the AR Heart app and the PowerPoint slides. And of course, validity and reliability of the motivated strategies for learning questionnaire and all that was tested, reliability using Cronbach's Alpha. I'm not going into all those details because I want to show you my results. So the MSLQ is very well known and it is on the Likert scale one to seven. And for the agentic engagement scale, also we tested the validity and the reliability as also for our 15 multiple choice question. Our 15 MCQs were constructed by us, by the PIs in the project, and they were, uh, a rating was uh, requested from 10 external experts who were all practicing international doctors, and then we calculated the validity. So this was STEM one uh, when we got the data. So let me show you the uh, statistical analysis. So when we looked for all these factors, we got a significant result was observed only in self-efficacy. While task value, engagement, total motivation and test performance, we did not get any significant difference between the um, PowerPoint group and the app group. After two weeks, uh, when we uh, tried to do, now we compared the self-directed learning of the AR Heart application and we compared it to the classroom activity, the classroom learning of the AR Heart application when the lecturers facilitated it. Now what we got was, there was a significant improvement in all the parameters when the AR Heart application was guided by the facilitator in the class. You can see that all the self-efficacy, the total motivation, task value, engagement, everywhere the mean of the group which is facilitated is higher and the significant value is, it is also significant. So, uh, so this clearly shows us also when we check the test performance, between the self-directed learning and the classroom learning. Again, we found the same result that there was significant improvement in the students' test performance when students used it after being guided in the classroom. So uh, some limitations and recommendations we can say are unequal sample size. We should have taken the samples after we got the consent forms. We need a longer duration of the study. We need to experiment with other study designs like randomized control trial. We need to check whether this kind of method can be applied to other schools and other learning programs. There are always some technical issues like lagging of the application because every student does not have the mobile phone that has those capabilities. Sometimes network is also uh, short. And then we need the test to be done under stringent conditions. We cannot just conduct the test online, which is what we did. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, we found that in self-directed learning, self-efficacy was significantly different. But when we facilitated the learning, all the parameters were different, whichever we were testing. And so we conclude that uh, students' positive experience with learning depends on effective facilitation by the educators. And the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And so when we saw our students' experience, this is the result that we got, that learning value, everything is above 55%. Motivation is higher, stretching thinking is there. They find it appropriate. They find it relevant to their clinical attachment. And they recommend that they will 
uh, recommend this app to others. So that is the most important. Our students enjoy using the app. So there are, of course, challenges. And if uh, I will leave the, uh, I will conclude here because I need to give you five minutes for questions. But there are challenges and there is another project in the pipeline when we are going to uh, try to do mixed reality uh, with the brain. And we are looking for some affordable hardware and HoloLenses and all that. So with that, I think I will say a thank you from the School of Health Sciences. And here there is a short survey. If any of you can scan this QR code, you can let us know what do you think is the most important feature for a digital application. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunny. Yeah. Okay. Just have some feedback. Okay. So, um, any question from our participants? You can raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry for the rush because there was so much to share and uh, I had to keep on looking at my watch. And so I stop. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I just downloaded the app actually. <laughs> oh, you downloaded the app? Yeah, I just downloaded. But but I'll leave the time for Q and A first. Okay. So um okay. Uh, if if there is no question meanwhile, uh is uh do you do you mention that you still have some more want to share with us? Uh, I only wanted to share the challenges in the app design because when we started in 2017, this was very, very new. And uh, our Cosware proposal committee, whom we were presenting the proposal, they asked us to go and research into NTU and NUS and find out everybody's experience. And in 2017, I found that people start doing this, but we stopped and uh, they were not willing to share their reasons. So it was a long journey for us. We um, tried very hard to come out with specific content. Not many vendors were available because not many were ready to tackle the medical content. So we are all a group of medical doctors and we constructed the activities ourselves. Uh, but I wanted, to, I wanted to check with the audience to see that what design could I use uh, so that I could get a better result. From my own view, though we did a quasi-experimental study, I want to again put in the project with a randomized controlled trial. I think a randomized controlled trial might give me better results in self-directed learning. I would uh, like to discuss this with the audience, actually. I thought that somebody would ask me that question. Yeah. So with more experienced people, I can learn. Is there any question? I cannot see a question. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Maybe 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 I got a such question for you. Yeah. Yeah. So based on your observation, do you think that there is a room for uh, developing such uh, AR um, teaching tools for other other parts of the body. So it is you. You are doing the AR hat right now. So do you think there is potential for yes, doing? Yes, AR? yes, it is definitely there. Potential is there. Though I must say now that AR is already passe. Meaning uh, now we have better technology. We have VR and more than VR, we have mixed reality. And I am more excited by the concept of mixed reality now because mixed reality gives the student an immersion into that environment. But of course, because the hardware is so costly, the HoloLenses and all, one HoloLens costs about 600 Singapore dollars. And our cohort is very big. So we may have maybe a couple of HoloLenses. So for the remainder of the class to do it, then augmented reality comes in handy. So we might go in for blended learning like AR plus VR or that is mixed reality. So I see more prospect for that 
but uh, definitely we need to have more research and see whether students really like it because when we show it in the open house uh, all our students like it they say we all the uh, visitors also like it and students say we want that so finally it is what our students demand and in covid restriction times the app proved very handy we used it for remote learning and we gave them 5% mark they did it and so many of them did it so everybody did, uh, attempted the app so when we give them a carrot they will do the application mm, okay mm. so the time is uh, May i have some comment great, great sure, yeah sure. thank you saying it's a very nice innovative courseware because I also teach in the Faculty of Medicine to okay. teach the uh, medical student. And I think it's uh, my first time to looking at the AR apps to doing the uh, ECG, right? Yeah. And also the heart structure. And I think it's very good. Yeah. I Thank wish you. I could I wish I could have shown you more where they construct the ECG. Yeah. And then when they are studying the different type of ECGs, there is a beep beep sound just like you get in the intensive unit and that really engages them yeah, yeah. i will take a lot of your <laughs> video Actually, and i will come to you yes i yeah. would share the video with you because the application is only open to our students currently oh i see but i would definitely share the video with you so okay my sure. email is there for the that's great so that i can take a look of your yes. courseware thank you for your sharing thank, thank you. you thank you Dr. Sage.